Hey gamers, nice to finally see you again. Wave, my name is Tia, and today we're showing you how to counter the current meta. If you're experiencing some trouble winning games, then you need to watch this video. Not only will you love it, so your elo. Akali is a heavily prioritized first pick on the Baron lane and a scary champion to face in any scenario. Fortunately for you, we've got the right pick for you to deal with her. Fiora has shown that she's more than capable of taking down this monster of a champion if you're playing it properly. Most champions simply get outmuscled by an Akali's damage and find it hard to compete with her power. However, Fiora, thanks to her passive and first ability, can most definitely stand her ground against that oppressive laner. For you that didn't know, Fiora periodically spawns vitals around enemy champions that are in range. If you strike such a vital, you're granted healing, bonus movement speed, and you deal some extra true damage to the target. After you've procced a vital, another one will spawn somewhere around the enemy. There are four potential spawns that you can simply categorize by cardinal directions, so don't forget about that. Another neat feature about Fiora is the fact that she's able to use her lunge on Akali when she's invisible in her shroud. Normally, no champion apart from the ones with AoE abilities are able to do anything about an Akali in her shroud. However, Fiora can. With that, combined with her ability of blocking all incoming debuffs and damage, she can mitigate quite a lot of Akali's impact in the laning phase. But you should never underestimate the mobility of an Akali. She has multiple dashes that can be used in sequence over a brief period of time. Luckily though, Fiora is able to match most of that mobility thanks to her insanely low cooldown on lunge after hitting an enemy. Similar to Camille, it's almost impossible to get away from a Fiora once she's attacking you. Just because of her kit, she's able to slow you and afterwards chase you down with ease. For lane, you want to be super aggressive when playing Fiora. Your champion is really strong and you should make use of that. Every single time an enemy is walking up to get a last hit, lunge at him, trade him, and most importantly, use your repost. Your second ability's cooldown is roughly half of what it is on League PC, and even there it's considered broken. Now imagine that you're able to entertain frequent trades that always end up in your favor because of that ability. It literally is unfair, so abuse it before it gets touched. For team fighting though, you want to be a little bit more reserved. Crowd control isn't something your champion provides unless you block an ability that CCs with your repost. Nevertheless, you cannot do that consistently. Most of the time, you'll split from your team and force the enemy team into a series of duels or rotational plays. With that, you're making sure to play around your strengths in the split push department, and if you feel the need to regroup with your team, you can still purchase the teleport enchantment. The best thing about the splitting part is that you're drawing attention to yourself. You're forcing somebody to answer. What champion, when you're at least even, can 1v1 a Fiora if you're playing well? Good luck finding one. Consequently, picture an Akali stuck in the side lane versus you. She can barely clear waves without expending all her energy, and her push is really weak compared to yours. Her area of expertise is not split pushing, but rather assassinating high priority targets in a team fight. If you manage to drag her away from those fights, you're doing an amazing job in terms of granting your team advantages. Speaking of advantages, playing with people you like and enjoy playing with is a natural boost to your gameplay, and so looking out to find such players is a thing anyone should want to do. If you want a platform where you're able to find players to play with or just chill and hang out, then check out our Discord in the description below. We have a super welcoming community for new players and veterans alike. So don't be shy and say hello, I might say hello back, I sometimes pop into the Discord myself. Alright, back to the video. Next on the list is one of the most hated champions in the mid lane. Katarina is more than infamous for her ability to leave lane and pick up a few kills in places you'd never expect her to be able to do so. And let's face it, not a lot of champions can change much about her doing so. With the recent nerf, or rather bug fix, of Galio's first ability, she can dominate him in lane if she knows what she's doing or the Galio is not confident in his own abilities. If Katarina starts with a longsword and conqueror, she can run down Galio if he ever wastes his spells by just spamming auto attacks. It does sound kinda weird, but it's more than possible, considering I've been on the receiving end of that strat and also picked it up myself soon after. However, there's a champion that can reliably deal with Katarina, and her name is Diana. The Lady of the Moon got some insane buffs to her passive as Riot chose to shift the attack speed steroid from her third ability to the Moon Silver Blade. Now, after casting a spell, Diana gains up to 120% bonus attack speed for up to three attacks. Sequencing your abilities and weaving in your auto attacks became even more important now. Don't forget, after every three hits, you deal an insane amount of extra damage thanks to your passive ability, so for laning you want to play around a little mechanic. 
Before you jump on an enemy in a lane, pre-stack your passive and then look for and engage with your Crescent Strike and Lunar Rush combo. Ideally, you'd like to hit minions close to you and the enemy champion at the end of your Crescent. This way, you can dash to the enemy champion for a quick trade and still jump back to a minion afflicted with Moonlight. Why might you ask? Here's why. Dashing to targets that are debuffed with Moonlight resets your cooldown on your Lunar Rush ability, and Moonlight is only consumed around the targets you dash to. As Katarina is heavily dependent on her cooldowns to deal damage, you're able to match her mobility and damage alike. In lane, Katarina players play a bit more reserved as they sit back in the earlier levels before they gain access to their core abilities. After that, you'll see a lot of Katarinas throw their daggers into the wave to immediately clear it. Most champions that would remain in that range will get annihilated in the process, but Diana has the mobility and damage to deal with Katarina. As the game goes on, Katarina's most dangerous asset is her ultimate ability in pursuit of getting to her constant resets inside of a fight. With your ultimate ability though, you have a good tool to stop her from channeling hers, while also putting out the deeps. Also, one last thing about Katarina. Running after her into the fog of war can turn into a huge risk that you shouldn't take too often. So what are you supposed to do once she vanishes from your sight? It's quite simple. Think about your attack speed steroid and the amount of damage you can deal to towers. Once an enemy leaves your lane, you can easily take down a turret in no time. With that said, let's take a short break to take a look at our question of the day. What do you think is the best split pusher in the game right now? Share it with us in the comments below. After the nerfs hit Alistar, he's become way less popular than he used to be. Prior to those changes, he was instantly locked in every single game for good reason. Now, after he's left the support throne, enchanters are rising up the ranks and are bullying dragon laners. So you'll be glad to know that there's a pick to rule them all. The Lady of Luminosity has made her stunning appearance in a position where you wouldn't expect her. Support Lux is an insane pick that isn't only dealing a lot of damage, but it also provides damage mitigation beyond imagination. In lane, you can skill your shield first and engage into seemingly very questionable traits, but don't you worry. If you and your AD work together, you will demolish the enemy. In addition to that, you pose a very big threat to any enchanter with your first ability. Catching anyone in it usually leads to their demise, and there's little to nothing they can do about it. For maximum damage in those situations, you can weave in auto attacks between your spells to proc your passive ability Illumination. You'll be surprised how much damage you can put out if you do that consistently. Apart from your auto attacks, only your ultimate ability is able to proc Illumination. Therefore, if you find yourself fighting in a narrow corridor, you can drop down your Lucent Singularity and pop it while casting your ultimate ability. Even though you're going into a full support build, you'll still deal more than enough damage. Honestly, it's kind of scary how much damage you actually do with all your spells combined while offering insane utility for your teammates. With this build, you're heavily prioritizing your second ability for team fighting to add more power to your goal. As a champion, you should rush Lucidity Boots with a Redemption Enchant. In your very first dragon fight, you'll shield your teammates for far more than 200 each and provide them with some extra healing from the Redemption. That combination has insane value and will almost guarantee you major advantages in any 5v5 scenario. The only downside of Lux support is the fact that you're very squishy, but that's something you share with all Enchanter supports. So if you're aware of your positioning in and before fights, you'll always have immense impact on the fights in comparison to other Enchanter supports. Last but not least on this list come a few ways on how you can actually counter Darius in lane. Many players think Darius is a good champion, but in reality, he isn't as good as you might think he is. He's very reliant on people allowing him to stack his passive on them. One could make the argument that to look good, Darius's enemy needs to play bad. Long story short, unless Darius gets to fully stack his passive in a fight, there's little to that champion's kit that's considered good. Due to the nature of solo queue though, you'll see a lot of tankier champions engage into pointless fights with a Darius. This is exactly what he wants, and if that happens seconds before a major team fight, Darius is going to 1v9 the fight. Flashing in with his first ability, applying his maximum bleeds to everyone instantly, and then dunking them is his go-to move. Therefore, you should always keep track of a Darius' passive bar and see when it gets dangerous. Another thing people tend to underappreciate is the idea of using healing or shielding spells as Darius uses his ultimate ability. Denying him that fateful reset is a game changer and shouldn't be forgotten, ever. However, let us take a look at champions that deal with Darius. For one, we have Malphite who functions as a stone wall in lane. He's not going to actively trade the Darius unless he can win. 
The primary goal in lane will be to throw seismic shards at Darius over and over again until he's running out of HP. Only then, the Malphite will look for an active trade. Post level 5, any kind of interaction 1v1 outside of a literal one-shot will most likely end up with you dying. Therefore, avoid falling into that trap. Also, always remember what I've told you about his passive stacks. Don't let him stack those up before a teamfight, keep your distance unless you have to go in, and if you look at the bigger picture, consistently speaking, a Malphite is more useful than a Darius, simply for the fact of how both champs work. To give you a bit more variety in this matchup, I'm going to add another champion that deals with Darius in a very dominating fashion if you play the matchup properly. Fiora isn't only good against Akali, she's also crazy good into Darius. Lunge will be your primary tool for poking Darius over and over again. In a 1v1 all-in, you're vastly superior thanks to the edge and movement spells. You can dance around the Darius and proc your vitals over and over again without him being able to do anything. Before he hits level 5, you can use your repost ideally to block either his third or second ability, but doing that consistently is not really possible. Successfully doing it though will grant you an easy win. After level 5, you have to play a bit differently. Blocking anything but his ult will most likely result in your death, as his ultimate ability deals by far the most damage, given he has 5 stacks. Once you're ahead of him, even slightly, you can brutalize him in lane without him being able to do anything against that. Sounds good enough for you? Then go ahead and give those champs a try and let us know how it went. And with that, we've reached the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoy our content, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to never miss anything Wild Rift again. Make sure to check out our Discord in the description box below, and don't forget to share your answer to the question of the day with us. Don't forget to stay motivated. The sum summertime is coming soon, and thanks for um, like saying hello to me on Instagram. I really appreciate it, and we're just having fun memeing. Okay, bye!